everybody. You're watching the Gold Squadron podcast. Doesn't sound like doesn't sound like Dion, does it? Well, because I'm not Dion. My name is Nick Sperry. Gold six standing by when we are excited to bring to you some live in person X Wing here at Pastimes, the uh, roots of Gold Squadron. We are in Niles, Illinois, and we've got a great series of games for you guys in person five rounds today at our store champ here. The winner, number one, will come away with not only a lot of swag, but a world's invite as well. And we are about underway. You know what? I just realized I got to get betting going for you guys. Hold on a second. This is, we, we bet here. This is, we're betting people. So I am going to get betting open for you. Hope you guys have had a good weekend so far. Had a good Friday. Let me know what you guys did your Friday night, if you did anything. I actually stayed home and watched reality, well, not reality TV, just like a drama show I've been watching. So if you feel bad that you didn't do too much, just remember Nick Sperry didn't do that much either. All right, betting is open. Choose your champion is live. Let's bring up the choose your champion poll here on, if I can find it. Where is choose your champion? Give me a second, guys. I'm going trying to find the source. Choose your champion. There it is. I got it. I found it. Boom. All right, betting is now open. Dion was. Dion will be here with me. <laughs> Don't miss Nick. He he's here. He is judging. Is that he is the TO here? So you will hear his the, the the voice of the nectar of the gods in a moment, and then you will be able to uh, tolerate the the voices here a little bit better. Uh, but let's break down the list really quick here. We've got Scum and Separatists. Oh no, did we hit a rock already? Do I even have time to break down the list? Manaru getting real close. We're gonna just carefully try that again. Anyways, while we, oh gosh, that looks like it could be a rock. What are we doing? We'll let them figure that out. I'll continue to break down the list. So we've got Scum Dan playing Scum here, which is great. Uh, scum, you know, not getting the most love these days, but we all do love Scum and different, you know, even though some of you don't play Scum, we all love Scum. We've got Fen Rao here, I-6. He's pretty threatening at range one with Burnout, Thrusters, Beskar, Rainforce Plating, and Fearless. That is a rock there for Manaru. It's going to be taking two damage, so uh, I'm about to get to Manaru, so I'll update our, our stats here. That is tough. Then we've got Manaru, who is just chilling on the rock right now with R6, P8, Punishing One, Contraband, Cybernetics, Agile Gunner, and Notorious. So, of course, you got that three dice gun with the Punishing One title. You shoot at Manaru, and Manaru has you in their firing arc. Gonna give you a strain with Notorious. Gets that reroll as well. Some great passive mods. Very scary. However, neutralized already here. Won't be engaging, I don't think, this round. It's possible that we might see an aggressive uh, force rate boost with Django, but we'll see. Next, we've got Dirge. Scum Dirge, you don't see Scum Dirge as much as Separatist Dirge, but we got both Dirges in this list, in these in these uh, lists here. So we've got uh, Scum Dirge. He basically gets to uh, turn hits into crits to reduce the amount of damage he's taking, if he's able to. Uh, I have his card pulled up here. I need to read it one more time. While you defend, after the neutralized result step, if there are more hit slash crit results than your active shields, you may change one hit result to a crit and cancel one hit. So conditional, not the best, but it, it can come in handy. We've got Bosk, the, the uh, I4 2.Z95 with marksmanship and expert handling. And lastly, Quinjast in the M3A. That's cool. We get the little Quinjast action with... Burnout, Thrusters, and Ion Cannon. You can do some crazy things with Quinjast with that 5k with Burnout. It's pretty fun. And then we've got Mr. World's Invite here on the right side. You guys know Nick Tobin. He's been on GSP many times. He's playing Separatist, though, not Republic, because he's already got his World's Invite for this upcoming Worlds. Uh, let's see. Let me. I don't know why the order for these is a little off, so let's start with Django. He's the I-6 Fire Spray here. Django has got Veteran, Tail Gunner, the Slave One title, Proton Bombs, and Dooku. And then we have General Grievous, the Coughing Boy, with Solus One title, Impervium Plating, Afterburners, and Marksmanship. So no longer seeing out maneuver on him very much these days with the uh, way points changed. 
DGS-047 uh, with munitions fail safe. We've also got Kalani, which uh, is a clever way to get some free locks and cluster missiles, and then rounding out the list, should have said this one for DGS, we've got Dirge, the other Dirge, the slightly better Dirge, with Zandu Blood title, Contraband, Proton Cannons, and Lone Wolf, and yes, we are gonna see Django be very aggressive here, and here comes Fen Rao. Those are the lists, Benning is gonna be open for a little bit longer. We're gonna see a lot of people commenting on AMG and Scum. Yeah, Scum's not in the best place right now. I do still think they're super fun. Um, it's nice to see you have a cheaper Fen route. Um, but yeah, not the easiest list build right now. Definitely a good challenge if you want to take the optimistic point of view. I will hide the choose your champion. And looks like Fen is just going to chill there and focus. Is betting not working for you guys? Uh oh, did Cloudbot? Yep. Oh, all right. Well, let's try this again. This is a CloudBot issue, so now you can bet. I'm gonna give you guys a little more of a grace period here. I apologize, I didn't realize that betting wasn't working. So it is now, and I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna say until the end of this engagement, so bet early, bet as fast as you can, as Django will start us off here. Range, I believe that was range three. Oh no, going into, looks like he's going to Fen. Are we not using the dice box? <laughs> it's like, what are we doing? Okay, so that was the result. That was a roll. Thank you. One hit. And we got Fen Rao. So that shot was evaded. Uh, easily, but this is Fenrau into Django. And Django is going to be taken too. So, not bad. Manaru is kind of sitting out there. I, th I wonder what Nick's thought process was there. Because, yeah, you can sneak in some. You could get. You can neutralize Fen at range three pretty easily here. We're checking at the top of the board. Grievous does have a range three shot into Quinn Jast. His ability will be active here. So, he's getting two rerolls if he needs to use it. This may be range two. We'll see how, it, how many defense. Wow, <laughs> it hit crit here. Just natties from Grievous. It is range two, and Quinn Jass is going to have to spend the focus and will take a shield. So that one shield on Quinn is now down. Now the hole of a TIE Fighter. That's still not working. Oh, that's so weird, guys. Let me see. All right, let's, let's, let's uh, troubleshoot this. Okay, so Cloudbot... Cloudbot was working, as you can see. It says Streamlabs uh, has opened it. I'm going to go, I refreshed it. I'm going to go back to it. It's on. Betting. Let's try one more time. Sorry, guys. It's so weird. It says it's open. So. And you guys are distracting me from the game. I'm talking about betting. You guys have a gambling problem. <laughs> Let's see. It's still not working. Let's see, exclamation point, points. There you go, it's just delayed. I'm seeing the betting going through now, guys. It was all, it was working this whole time, okay? This entire time. So we are into round two now. Round two, and we're playing Assault at the Satellite Array. Here at GSP, we'd like to do a good job of talking about each scenario and why uh, they're you know what makes them different why it's significant for lists so a solo at the satellite array as you can see there's five objectives out there this is the quote-unquote king of the hill scenario essentially you just need to be within zero to one of a given objective placed and you'll score a point medium and large bases are worth two ships though so if there is one small base on one side and one medium base on the other side near that objective the medium base will win out and score that point you can contest as well if there's a small base on each side or to medium or large base on each side. No points will be scored for that objective. And here he's, he's here. Oh my gosh. Dion's here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, oh. Betting, so the Cloudbot did that thing where it would turn off and, like without us I knowing. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Why does it do that? <laughs> it's just, I'm tired. Leave it, me alone. Right, and then it took like a solid five minutes for the betting to actually work. So after the first engage, betting's finally working. All right, cool, uh, cool, cool. 
Let them bet. Let them bet, yeah. So, unfortunately, Manaru parked on a rock the first round and took two damage. All so right, Dan is, tough. Dan is flexing right now. He's trying, he's like, I, I'm going to take free damage. I'm it's it's, it's not, only, not only am I going to play a scum squad, right, that G GSP on their podcast was just trashing all of scum, <laughs> but I could even afford to smash it into a rock <laughs> yeah, and, and still be okay. I dare him to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just got a little too close. You could see the corner just barely clipped. Um, however, Django came in aggressively, but mm -hmm. took a shot at Fen. Oh, okay. Instead of, of Manaru, um, which didn't do any damage, but in return, Fen did two shields to Django. So it was Ooh. kind of an interesting exchange yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the risk there because being able to just clip a couple damage off of Fen can, can change how aggressive he is. Um, but yeah, that's huge. And just real quick, I'm, I don't know if Nick, you mentioned it today. I'm the judge at this event, so I'm just kind of poking in once in, in a out. while, and uh, just making sure to keep my eyes on the table and make sure I'm, I'm there for the players. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to keep Nick uh, company and ask him lots of awkward questions. I'll be back. They've already they've already mentioned out there. They're not a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> he will be back, folks. That was the voice of the nectar of the gods. So now it's, uh, we've got, if you're Dan here, you've got Django to deal with. Dirge is a little threatening, though, with that proton cannon. And the large base tends to get snagged in that bullseye, especially when you're lower initiative, as Manaru is, at initiative three. Well, let's put Dirge above Manaru and Bosk above Manaru. Manaru and Quint can chill at the bottom at I3. There we go. So as I was saying, with Assault of the Satellite Array, just like the other f three scenarios, you cannot score points in the first round uh, in terms of objective points. So this round, objectives are live. It looks like Bosk is going to be the one to try to take the one on Dan's side. Quinn Jast, we'll see if Quinn ends up turning down the board. Probably a little bit risky with Grievous there. It's just going to go super fast past the... We might be seeing a 5k here. No, just a 5 straight. Going super fast, a little zoomy zoom. Grievous is stressed, so, and we're gonna slam. There is the burnout thruster here. It looks like that is gonna be the 5K, and now you've got that objective all to yourself. Quinn Jast, expert flanker. Need for speed has been realized. Nice to see betting actually working. Let them have bets, that's what started the French Revolution. Yes. Cursed Kiwi, thank you so much for subscribing at Tier 1. 49 months. Appreciate you supporting us here at Gold Squadron Podcast. You guys are wondering who the heck is this? Dion sounds like he has a cold and has changed bodies and personalities. That's because he has. It's just, it's just I'm just different now. My name is Nick Sperry, Gold 6. you guys watched the Midwest scrub down I was there streaming with Will you also might know me from 312 squadron based in the sh city of Chicago but I started out doing this with GSP still love to help him out I'm happy that Dion invited me to do this super honored and excited to be here for in-person X-Wing which is always the best form of streamed X-Wing I just gotta say it just is it's not as easy to set up but it is awesome and grievous Doing a three straight and just going to link boost uh, focus here. I actually believe it's focus boost in that order, but still ends up with the focus and stress nonetheless. And Dirge is going to go straight. So can barrel roll right behind Django? I believe that's going to be the play. The link uh, focus, link roll here so you can try to line up a bullseye. I think that angle will allows you to do it, and that's exactly what Nick is going to do. So proton cannon opportunity on to Manaru. Can you say a little zoomy zoom again? A little zoomy zoom. I got you. Little, a little zoomy zoom. Zoomy zoomy zoomy. Don't know, I, I don't see how many people are watching right now, but I'm gonna look it up, because I'm curious. Thank you for spending your part of your weekend with us here. Oh. 
And this is Scum Dirge coming in. We've got Dirges on the left, Dirges on the right. Dirges all over and they're gonna fight, fight, fight. And yeah, he's got, it's like he got the flank on Grievous there. You're gonna block on Django here. And I would love to see Fenrout with a two bank. Oh, it would be amazing. Get in there, Fen. Come on. What did he do? Let's see. So here is the doll reveal, and it is the two bank. That's going to be right where Fenrout wants to be. He's got Fearless. He's got Beskar. And he's got a five dice gun at range one. That rhymes. I don't know if he's in arc right now. He might need to barrel roll to be able to use Fearless. He doesn't have any other way to modify blanks. 57, well, tell your, tell your family, tell your, tell your neighbors, tell your pets to jump on and watch Colt Squadron. Whoever can get their entire pet household to watch the stream will get a prize from me. You have to you have to send me proof though that they're all watching. He takes a lock. Okay. No, no, he didn't take a lock. That was the fort. What what was that? He focuses that token down there. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like a target lock though. All right, so the range zero returns two crits and a Manaru as Manaru is gonna take another shield. So the shields are now down. And, oh, <laughs> notorious strain. That's even more brutal. Got it, he threw, Manaru's ability exists. Thank you, folks. I was wondering, he took a lock and the Manaru threw the focus over, transferred it over with the ability. <gasps> oh, that's gonna be five. Yeah, spend it all day, dude. Did, unless he's got, unless he can fearless here. Does he have, I don't believe Django is in Fen's, uh, Django has Fen in his front arc though. He's gonna spend, yeah, spend all day, dude. Absolutely. And so with the strain, he rolls one die, and he's going to spend the force and take two hits and two crits. So two shields and two crits. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, we're about to find out. Uh, they're upside down. <laughs> I'll find out in a second. But they don't look good. I think I saw one was a disabled, maybe a structural, which is terrible, and a disabled power regulator, maybe. So we'll see in a second. Hey, hey, Dion, could you see what the crits are on Django for me? Thanks. Dion being the man. Two hits. Hit crit. Here, this is the proton cannon. That's a little bit rough. And Manaru is going to only take a crit. Okay. Oh my god, I guessed both of them right. Thank you. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you so much. So, four hole Jenga with structural damage. He's eight points. That's that's a bit scary. I'm not sure what the crit was on Manaru though. Did you guys catch that one? And another notorious there on to Dirge. Now it is time for, do we have range one? No bullseye, let's take like range one from Scum Dirge into Grievous, the general himself. Let's roll the right dice. Hit crit, okay. Grievous, looks like that's one of aid and Solus one and he will take one. So shield down on the general. It's coughing up a storm in that cockpit. Range two into Bosk. 
Don't believe his ability is active. It is. It is active. Okay, hit, hit, crit. So that means boss does not have Grievous in his arc. Getting two crits. Boss, going to need to roll a little bit of paint here. And he does roll one, spends, and he takes a sh he takes two shields. So boss down to just two hole. Thankfully, he's so cheap. Don't think DGS won't be participating. Quinjas won't be participating, and we'll be counting up objectives. It looks like it's going to be ooh, two for Dan. Three for Dan here, and one for Nick. We got one more shot, though. This is Manaru's range zero, two hits in the Django. He's going to be taking one no matter what here. Oh, he rolled too many dice, I think. Yeah, so punishing one will not work at range zero. We must roll... <laughs> Still rolls natties. Uh, he rolled too many. He rolled oh, worked out though. He takes one. Django down to just three. All right, and now it'll be looks well, like three to one. So I think Fen is within range as well. We can't see it because it's covered. I'm going to just check on Manaru's crit. We'll be right back, guys. It is a hull breach on Manaru. That's also pretty bad. <laughs> Oh boy, a little scary, but I'd say that Dan is winning out here in terms of the damage race. He's got a much more important ship to take off the board, hurting. And next turn will gain his first Ion token. It's three to one, heading into round three. We'll turn off the dice cam for a moment. This game, I feel like, is, is it's like that Ron Burgundy meme. Like, well, that escalated quickly because, well, things have been escalating very quickly here. We've had, I think, five rounds worth of damage kind of dealt out quickly in the first couple of rounds. It's only three to one, but it feels like a it feels like quite the carnage fest here. And he's gonna rotate his arc backwards. With the agile gunner, okay. He wants to make sure he gets another shot onto Django. Curious to see what he decides to do with Fen. If he decides to kind of just go after Dirge now, I know Dirge is not as easy to take off the board. Or if he wants to be cheeky and try to one hard. However, you know, one bad shot into Fen could be all that it takes. Limited lifespan. Limited lifespan. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. 44 months, that's a lot of months. That's a few years, isn't it? That's over three years. You're getting close to four. It's so cool to see the, the just really do appreciate you guys. I'm gonna get a little mushy on you guys really quick. The uh, the, the loyalty that you guys have given um, GSP and just the X-Wing community and the content creators over the years, even when we had, you know, something about a pandemic happening, you guys were still very much in it with us. And it's just cool, super cool to see people, you know, being subscribed for four plus years. <laughs> Been ha doing this for a while. That that is such a hilarious uh, emote. The cup, it's the cup. Got to rub the cup. So we're heading into round three. Let's do a quick damage report here. We've got Django Fett, the eight point fire spray at I six. He's got only three hole left. Partially due to a, an engage where he took a structural damage early on. Uh, so Fen Rao delivering the structural. He's got a disabled power regulator as well. So if, if Dan can get uh, Django off the board, 
uh, it's pretty much just up to General Grievous to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Dirge is, is always a bonus. He can, he's certainly capable of doing some damage, but he's, uh, he's not necessarily there to be the hammer. It's for the love of the game, absolutely. 100%. those of you guys just tuning in, we are here at Pastimes, here in Niles, Illinois, the home of Gold Squadron. We got a five round store champ today. The winner of this event will walk away with an invite to Worlds at Adepticon in 2024. I hesitated just for a brief second because I uh, keep forgetting what year it is, but it's 2023. It's so cool to have store champs back. It's, so first player is gonna move over to Dan which if he did dial in a one hard with Fen, I think that's actually better. See, uh, Django doesn't really have a lot of room, so he's gonna have to go down to the left. DGS just gonna hang out. We got the Roomba parking on an objective. Did he reload the burnout on Quinn? Uh, that's, a great, that's a great question, because Quinn Jass' ability does have to do with recovering that charge, doesn't it? It's hard for me to tell because he doesn't have the charge out there. So if we see him do anything crazy again, we'll know. <laughs> uh, we're going to get a target lock there. Actually, a great opportunity to ionize DGS. DGS, although I think it might be obstructed, is only one agility. And Quinn Jass has an ion cannon. So I want your guys' feedback here. Ion these days. What are your thoughts on if it's a lot better? Or about the same as it's been maybe you know a year ago I think ion is incredibly powerful these days a lot better in my opinion but I'm curious what you guys think how are ties being decided yeah SOS would be the primary tiebreaker roll better does a good job of making it a fair SOS even if somebody drops so that is kind of just like that is the tournament guidelines these days is SOS is primary tiebreaker and the mission points is secondary. It's very good right now, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I also am a TO myself. So if any qu TO questions, anybody in the chat, feel free to ask. Um, basically, it needs to be over 16 players to justify more than four rounds. This event is a five round Swiss. However, if you have over 16 players, you can always choose to do a, a four round Swiss in a top two final table cut so that everybody else doesn't you know, need to play a fifth round. But real, either way, you're not doing it wrong. The bank option helps for sure. Especially if you could avoid a rock with the bank. <laughs> yeah, ion turret's just more expensive, but if you can afford it, absolutely. Be taking that ion cannon turret. Dorsal's just always been there, right? It's never been you know, tried and true damage dealer, but it's it's good coverage. It helps you, uh, you know, keep people honest a little bit. And Bosk is just going to try to block off uh, Grievous. However, I don't, I think Grievous can easily do a two bank and jump over. Maybe Grievous wants to just kind of contest that objective for a round. He's not in a lot of danger there, though, because Grievous is uh, stressed. So, yeah, you just take a focus. That's true. Yeah, I mean, Ion, um, Ion also just kind of guarantees a damage. If you would, if you were firing a primary at range three, it kind of cancels out, right? Like an Ion missile or Torp or something will restrict the range bonus and at least guarantee you something. Whereas a Dorsal doesn't even reach out to range three. That's one limitation. Yeah, it's it is interesting moving to SOS. Um, it, that wasn't the way it was done before, but it is that way now. And Chris Allen is kind of, you know, leading that that uh, conversation and, and protocol. So there is, you know, he has good reason for it, I assume. I think they want to try to maybe reward the player who has had the hardest matchups in a tiebreaker. Just had to play the people who played the best versus someone who maybe had a lighter schedule. But again, you can't control that. So it's not like it's anybody's fault. Ooh. So we get a little cheeky 
hard turn in, and I think that's a contraband spend. It is. There's a stress out there, I assume. He's gonna is he being double stressed? He really wants to catch Grievous here. He might have lined up that arc if he goes all the way back. I'm not so sure though. Yeah, my top I, top four game at Gen Con, I uh, used it starter Vader's Ion Missile into Luke, who had a nice torp shot into one of the boys. And I ionized him, and he lost the lock. It's pretty good. Just a strong control piece, right? Ooh, dude, does he have arc on Manaru? Oh, my. That is close. Takes a focus. You just hope you do. Can't do anything else about it. Fen still has that lock on Django as well. And he did do the one hard. He really wants to take him off the board. I'm not so sure that fits. Let's see, though. Oh, uh, Sadly, it doesn't, so he's going to probably go about halfway. Yeah, I mean, so there should not be a top four cut. I will be 100% honest, and this is to be helpful with you guys. If you're running an event with, let's say, 20 people or 24 people, and you have a four-round Swiss cut to top four, that mathematically eliminates somebody who went three and one who probably should have made cut. So don't do that. Do five rounds of Swiss or do four rounds of Swiss and a cut to top two. The top two players will be the undefeateds at that point. There will be no arguments or feels bad from somebody who got bumped off because of a tiebreaker. Just, yeah. Obviously, that, you know, is different for larger events. You could be bumped out of, but you just need to get a certain number of mission points to make it to the second day. It's not a top 16 or whatever anymore. So he takes the red focus there, and here comes Django. I assume Django is just going to, yeah. So poor Fen misses his opportunity. Just just a, a victim of the road roll. And now he's a little, you know, he's going to get at range one. He will get uh, four dice. However, I'm not so sure that is range one. It looks like it is. But he doesn't get Concordia from the rear arc shot. So you guys did a top four at your store store event. It's just it just stinks just because a three and one doesn't get to play in the top four when they probably should. That's why I just don't really like it. Like I want more people to make cut, but it also just like kind of hurts. But again, with drops with SOS roll better doesn't punish somebody for having it. They create like an artificial record for the rest of the the games for the player that dropped if that makes sense they don't get you don't get punished it doesn't help your sos but it doesn't roll better does a good job of not hurting you drastically if somebody drops with your sos yeah 26 people that's a lot okay let me turn the dice game back on for us So that was Fen's shot into Dirge. He's still debating it if he thinks he has. I mean, Dirge can afford to take damage here. It's Dirge. It's separate to Dirge. He's going to take a shield. So shield's down, I believe. No, he's got one left. Now Django's turn. Probably going to Manaru, I'd think. If we can get that model back on there. There we go, Nick. Got a boy. Nicely done. Look at that expertise there, putting the model back on. That is range one. And he gets the rerolls for four, spent the target lock, and spends a force to get the full string. No crits. Fan Rao does get four dice here, and he only rolls one of eight. Oh, Fan takes three. 
and all of a sudden Fen Rao is at risk of exploding and he's worth six points as well. Fen doesn't like it. Hello community, hello you, how are you? Lord of Britannia, I know that name. Firecast Focus is here, hello Firecast. You're watching Gold Squadron Podcast, my name is Nick Sperry. Dion is here, but he's the TO, he's the Marshal. So he's gonna be popping in and out here. I am kind of leading the charge today, GSP. Thanks for tuning in, spending part of your weekend with us. Why not for in-person X-Wing? You got to do it. Cancel all your plans. If you see GSP streaming in-person X-Wing, sorry, Mom, I'll hang out with you tomorrow. Sorry, date. We'll get drinks another time. Now, all of a sudden, you're, yeah, it's like, can you just get Fenrau off the board here? Because yeah, he's like... Blink of an eye, he's one away. Well, I trust myself with a microphone. Is that not enough? That's going to be hit crit here. I'm not sure the target is. Oh, he's checking if he can Dooku. Or no, he's checking for the Lone Wolf. Apologies. So he is Lone Wolf. He was able to, and he gets a full string. And that, yeah, so he did have Manaru in arc, and Manaru blanks out and takes three crits with whole breach. Could this be the end of Manaru as we know it? I, yeah, I'm not sure what the crits are. We're not seeing them. Biddy Bumbo. I'm supposed to have a date on Monday, but we'll see. As a Cubs fan, I, I get a little concerned with seeing, like, dating a White Sox fan. So, it might be DOA. Shout out to Biddy Bumbo. He is the biddiest of the Bumbos. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here with Manaru, but we'll have to find out. And Manaru's dead. So, Manaru took enough credits. Must have been a few leak of direct hit combo in there. So Nick's going to take a 6-3 to three lead. Rut row. And uh, Grievous is in a good position to pounce next turn. So Fen's going to have to be careful. We've got Joe Kosk 8 subscribing with Prime. 25 months. That's over two years. Woohoo! Thanks for tuning in. Two hits here. This is Dirge on Dan's side into Grievous. Grievous takes one. No reroll. Or is this Quinn Jast? Okay. DGS into Quinn. Safe. <laughs> That could have been boss shot in a Grievous, but he still would have had a Solus one reroll. Oh, you know what? It was it was Quinjast into DGS. That was what it was, and it was a shield down. There we go. We got Doug Zug, 22 months. Thank you for the Twitch Prime subscription. Apologies, 23 months. I just can't read. Stopped. I have wear glasses now, and I'm still blind. All right, we're at cleanup here. Let's take a look at the objectives. It's going to be contested at the bottom. Nobody has the middle. Looks like it is, I think it's Dan's on the left, Dan's on the right. So two to one for Dan and Nick. So I have seven to five in favor of Nick. Ooh. Oh, these are beautiful. I missed out on these, so. Oh my gosh, so he doesn't, the gifts just keep coming. There's two things, so not only is it a full set, but it's also the gold set. There's a gold and a silver. <gasps> what? There's, a gold, there's only 15. Are you sure you want, do you sure you want to give them to me? Do I deserve it? <laughs> Dion just brought me some gifts. You guys can, I'm going to show them off so I can make you jealous. 
He gave me these gold trim pins from Galaxies, which is like, I am elated. I've gotten some gifts today from Dion already. These are beautiful. I can't wait to maybe pin them to my backpack, although I need to get a new one. It's the Rebel one. Shout out to the Rebels, you know. Got my Paint Wars shirt on today as well. Good stuff. There's a certain camo RZ2 Paint Wars. Paint Wars is the best. A gold set on the yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're right. True. Yeah. So if I hope I'm Paint Wars. Fun fact, guys. If you didn't know, I, I think some folks maybe don't. I uh, I had the pleasure of editing um, Paint Wars those episodes. I am a video guy by trade. It was very fun. Had a great time. So heading into round four, let's update that. Seven to five in favor of Nick. We've got a three-hole Django who will be ionized by this turn. So Fen Rao, if Fen Rao, can, Fen Rao just needs to stay alive one more round. It's going to be difficult. Dirge is going to try to block him. He is stressed. He has burnout. So... Could help, you know, uh, fun fact, you can burn out thrusters into a bump because it's a maneuver, not an action. Matthew Corser is here. And we've still got plenty of time left in this game. I definitely don't think we're gonna go to time here. However, this is a turn now where it looks like ships are about to depart their objective zones. So we're not going to see, uh, I don't think Dan's going to be able to keep Quinn uh, near the top right. And the top left is, I think, even Bosk will probably still be there. Dirge is going to try to, Dirge just needs to clear stress. So he, yeah, so Dan will keep the top left. The rest is up in the air right now, though. First player. Congratulations, Nick Tobin. You are the lucky recipient of the first player award. He is elated. He's jumping with joy. Uh-oh. That is a scary thought as a proton bomb gets dropped by Django. If he gets blocked, if Fen gets blocked, that will be the end of Mr. Rao. Not to be confused with Rayo's, the tomato sauce. This is Fen Rao, not Fen Rayo. No, you guys often get them confused. Oh, he is going to hard turn. I guess he will. Looks like he's going to stay close enough. He just... Just going to park there. Just his, He's seeing his win condition is just stay even with objectives. Fen Ragu. Yes. He will barrel roll back in. Can he burn out into a bump and focus? Correct. You can't. It's the world, somebody did that to me, and I was like, you can't do that. There's no way. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, can't, you can't. And he walked me through it. I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Because it's a maneuver, right? Uh, and then once the, 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 the opportunity to do the red focus is triggered by the, the overlap of an enemy ship. So as long as you're not stressed. It's, it's pretty nifty. Grievous. He goes, <laughs> I'm coming, Fenral. It's my terrible Grievous impression. I would, I would, it would be better, but I would be screaming into the microphone, and I don't want to do that, <laughs> so. <sighs> Time to abandon ship. Coaxium hyperfuel is ridiculous with bump slam, yeah. That's an upgrade I haven't heard in a long time. Advanced Slam. I love Advanced Slam. I used to play Major Vendor all the time in 2.0. And I would just slam all over the place. <laughs> like, I didn't even care about shooting. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> oh, that was, like, one of my first, like, I was, I want to say, I was playing Vendor, like, in my first, like, month of playing X-Wing ever. And it was just so fun. <laughs> it was just, like, my opponents were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just slamming. I'm slamming and jamming. <laughs> Okay, so we see a hard turn block attempt, although I would think 
Does he barrel roll though? Try to block Fen? Because I don't think Fen's going straight. I would, why would Fen go straight, right? No, he's just going to chill. Okay, well. Ion Vader and Rock, yeah. Vinder, uh, Vinder likes to be mean. Gunboats in December, maybe? Um, I, I would... Here's my honest take. I wouldn't hold my breath on getting reprints this year. But that would be awesome. I'm all for it. I just wouldn't hold my breath. Because if you hold your breath, you might not breathe again. You need to breathe. <gasps> Did he hit it? I think he hit the rock. Do we have that rock? That pesky rock! No, he focuses. He doesn't hit the rock? What? <laughs> oh, I thought he was on it. It looked like he was on it. He's right next to it, apparently. No, he does go. Why did he go straight? No, that's probably the end of Fenrau. But why? Why did he go straight? Why, Fen? Your wind condition is sitting behind a rock on the left side. He should have done it too hard. And is that going to be range one? Um, oh, I think it's out. I think it's out. I think he might have caught a break, but you got to take a red focus. Grievous is going to have a double modded shot, though. Oh, oh, it still hits him. He's gone. That's a bye-bye, Fenrau. Just not not sure what Dan was doing there with us going straight. So that is going to get Nick up to 13. 13 to 5. I feel like he just kind of gave up Fenrau. Looks like Django did it too. So I, I think in that position you can too hard and even though you might still be near the bomb you can still reposition out if you think you can or you can do your burnout thruster because he hadn't used it yet and I've probably gotten out of a shot on Grievous and had range one on Django even with the uh, deplete you still get four dice Django has is ionized now it would have only been on three hole with a structural so Django is going to shoot at scum dirge no oh, just brutal Two crits. Scum Dirge takes a couple. And a shield and a crit. Actually, I think he just takes a shield. Right? Not sure. Okay, hit crit. This is into Django. Django's just gonna call and evade. He's gonna take another crit though. And he gets the evade. Takes one more. That crit is I You guys are better at reading it than I am. That's too fast for me. But down to two. Chat, who is paying attention? I'm quizzing you. What crit was that? Since it was sideways, I started to turn my head, and then he pulled it up. Whole breach. Thanks, guys. You guys are so good. No, that's not good. That's not great, Bob. Gets the evade. Okay, so the good news for for Dan is that Django's just going to, you know where he's going. And he's only got two hole left. That's eight points out there. That could get you to 13. Looks like it's going to be two to two with objectives. Seven to 15. So now it's just, you're just on objective duty if you're Nick. Just find a way to score. Let's see, three, you could, you could, Grievous could get one, Dirge can grab one. Yeah, so you could get those three kind of near the center and on his side. That would get you up to 18. 
assuming that Dan is able to get uh, Django off the board. That would get you to, uh, let's see, that would be 15. But you would still need to get a, at least two more. So he's, his goal now is to just be within one. The, 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 the downside is that nothing is close to dying on uh, on Nick's side besides Django. Yeah, that's correct. You can't do any other additional actions. It's basically the rules say you just you, you just you do that and there's nothing else you're gonna do. That's it. Stop like stop doing anything else. So round five, this could be it. This, this could be the last round. Was the dash a great question? It was not. A little too late that it came out. There's some logistics too with um, one with people being able to uh, to have be, people having it because it was sold out in a lot of places. Um, the other issue is just the back end with uh, roll better and the overlay, just kind of having that. Just it's just a little too late to have it. I think if it had been one day earlier, we would have been fine. Because we got the points like yesterday afternoon, you know. Yeah. If it had just been, maybe even if it was earlier in the morning. Uh, betting is open because I had to manually do it. Yeah, so we'll close it. Keeping me honest. Thanks, guys. It was broken earlier, so typically it's on a timer, but when I have to reopen it because of some some issues on the back end, it will stay open until I close it. Well, it's like most of you didn't realize it was open still. So I think that, I mean, one of the differences in the game is absolutely the fact that Manaru hit that rock the first round. Took two damage for free. Fen Rao, the real, the, I mean, what, what really matters the most is that Fen Rao decided to block himself. I mean, I know that Dirge was in the way, but he didn't, he, why did he go straight? You at least are willing to trade Fen for Django. General, General Grievous using afterburners after slooping. Seems good. You'll have a uh, re he'll couple re rolls. Think he's at range one of that bottom middle point as well. Yeah, we'll see. So, so Boss could turn down and Pink Dirge could put Arcs on Django. Yeah, hopefully it's just all you need is just Dirge to get Django off the board. DGS goes up towards Quinn Jast, and here is a, looks like we're trying to gang up on Quinn here with the uh, linked action here from Dirge. Trying to get that bullseye for a Proton Cannon. Looks like he did. And dead to rights, it's scary. Can't modify your defense dice at all. So we could see a one-shotted Quinjast. So I think you just stay there. Because if you barrel roll, Django had dialed in the one bank to the left. You should be okay, but you might not have range one. Just gonna flip. Uh, Nick just flips the Sable Power Regulator because he's about to execute his Ion Maneuver.
How loud is the music for you guys? I noticed that there's some music playing in the background. <laughs> it's probably good to have his little backing, but you don't want it to be too loud, you know? So it just focuses. Is he going to roll? He's going to roll. It's a fine level as a background. Thanks for the feedback. Appreciate that. And we're just going to get up in each other's faces. You just hope that Dirge can uh, not die here, which it looks scary for Dirge. <laughs> That would be a huge bummer if you had Django down to two with a structural and he gets you get one shot at their best shot. Definitely a good call, just moving straight on, one straight with the ion maneuver instead of banking it, because you get the shot that you want here. Oh he's gonna is he good is gonna take a shot into Huh, okay. So into Bosque, I think that's range three though. Uh, I think, so, I, I apologize, guys, you're right. Uh, Dirge does have, I think Dan actually has, I have the two Dirges flipped right now, so Dan does have five hole, and it looks like Nick should have a shield left on his Dirge, so that's the actual damage on Dirge right now. I had mixed them up once. Still, probably right, five hole. So that's going to be three after spending the force. And that is enough to kill Bosk. Unfortunately, that will do it. I believe it gets to 17. Might not, actually. If you, it might not be. I think that gets to 19 points here unless Quinn dies. But yeah, it would just prolong it, the round, the game one more round. So Sad Bosk gets taken off the board there. Our favorite Trandosian is gone. So now we check for the bullseye. I think he definitely got it. Yeah. So we've got another Proton Cannon here. Again, bullseye means dead to rights. No, he fires. Oh, he didn't have it. It was just a primary. Lucky for Quinjast. I thought he had it, but it was just off on the edge. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's a big deal. That is a really big deal, I think. I mean, it's a big deal. Like, you don't guarantee a loss in this round. Keep Quinn, al keep Quinn alive here. Nice shot there from Scum Dirge into Django, which mathematically takes him off the board. So he gets up to 15. Dan doing a nice job of finishing what he started. All those crits come through. There he goes. I'm not sure if, if Dan even has an objective point this turn. He needs one. Ooh, that looks like that could be range one. It is not. It is all right. Use Grievous's reroll for a hit. Crit. Marksmanship turns one up to a crit. Two crits. And look at the natty of aids from Dirge. Dirge doing his thing. Let's go, Dirge. Nice to see Scum Dirge respond there. All right, objective points now. Oh, we got one more shot. DGS It's going to shoot a Quinn. For one. Quinn, as a focus, you should be fine.
and we'll acquire a lock there. It's like a Kalani trigger. Grievous, yeah, so it is. Uh, I think he did. He get that one? Did he? Did we? Did he check? He must be close enough to have it. I think it's. It's definitely two for Nick here. Up to 19. I think Dan is up to 16. Just check on what they have on their score. Be right back. All right, guys, it's 19 to 15, actually. So looks like Nick has got this one. He would have to, uh, Dan would have to take Grievous down. It's just not possible this round. Remember, guys, we got four more games here. We're doing five rounds of Swiss today. No cut. Whoever plays on stream in the fifth round are the top two players vying for that world's invite. So we'll be here all day. All day? Okay, out the bets for you guys, just because of from what I've seen, I've seen enough. Still having the coaxium hyperfuel conversation. All right, question for you guys. What is the best upgrade in the game? Best value, you can, however you like to look at it. And I'm not gonna count um, talent, or uh, not talents, titles. So best upgrade in the game. Because titles are like considered like an upgrade card, but like you can't just, you can only equip them on one chassis or a couple of pilots. For me, it's kind of a toss-up between Fearless and Predator. I know those are both talents, and there's way more options, but... Bistan. Yeah, Bistan. Um, I don't even think about Bistan, though, just because you can't put Bistan on that much, um, you know, outside of Rebels. But right now, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> oh, no, do we rock ourselves again? Yeah, I want to say, I know, if, I, I mean, it's a little hypocritical for me to say Fearless and you can only use it in Scum, but Predator, if, if you're going by all factions that can take it. Oh no, is he on it? Is he on the rock? Yep, he's not. Nice. The old boost to get a point. Just in time, the game's just starting. <laughs> so Dion, we saw kind of a crazy game. We uh, after you left when Manaru was on the rock, Django right. got down to just a few hole with a structural damage. Oh no! Dropped a proton bomb. Um, but uh, before he did that, he, right. he took Fen Rao from a rear arc shot at range one down from four, full health to one, mm -hmm. <sighs> and then Fen got blocked into the proton bomb and got taken off the board. 
crazy, so, man. Yeah, this just goes to show Fang Fighters, they're super fun, right? But they get shot at once. You they just never know. <laughs> don't, just, no touchy. Don't shoot no at dutchy. me, please. <laughs> I want to be in your face at Rage 1, but also please don't shoot at me. Correct. Uh, but Fenrau is getting a lot of value play from both Scum and Rebels these days, which is awesome. Like, I really like to see that. The, the Fang Bodica is popular. Um, the, the Fang Fighter just has that, that appeal, right? You have the... You have the possibility, if everything works out for you, and you're able to like stay out of range, jump into Rage 1, you have the Concordia face-off working for you, if you're Fen Rao, you get all these extra dice, like, if you're, you're playing Fen for the dream, is what really what you're doing, you're like, I have a possibility to be essentially invincible. Is, is that why you play Scum, is it for the dream? <laughs> for the dream, yeah. Uh, it looks like we're going to get one hit going through there. Yeah. So this game, mathematically, has been determined just based on the board state. Mm -hmm. Um so Tobin's gonna end up getting it. He looks will, like. yeah. Just based on um, his his ships are too healthy, and he's got the objectives locked up. Too here. healthy. One left. Yeah. Too healthy for too Dan here. Healthy. Got that so, preventative care, man. Yeah. So that's gonna be one for Dan, and looks like that gets nicked to twenty one. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen. Row 6, 626, Chief, and J-List, our Grand Admiral Patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron, out.